continue with the module 4, which was basically having two parts. One part was feedback in amplifiers, the other part is uh, coupling methods, frequency response of uh, amplifiers and uh, multi stage amplifiers. Now, the one thing which we encounter which is in, in general is very important for any amplifier is its gain versus frequency response. Now, this will depend actually what type of coupling we have used. Coupling is required in every instrument. What is coupling? For example, we have a amplifier. At the input side of the amplifier, we have to connect the source. It may be oscillator, it may be a mic or it may be some other electronic circuit that will send signals to be amplified in this amplifier. Now, how we connect it? You may say that connection may be through just a conducting wire. Well, that is one, one way. It has its own limitations and some better good points also. <coughs> and similarly, at the output, at the output of the amplifier, for example, if we continue to talk about voltage amplification, then the amplified output has to be connected somewhere where it is going to be used. It can be a load load can be a speaker, it can be a motor and so on. So, how we connect that? So, there are various ways of uh, connecting it. <coughs> One of the very widely used method in uh, particularly in discrete circuit, this was the most commonly used method of coupling. Even today, it is widely used and uh, so that is RC coupling coupled amplifiers. RC coupled amplifier. R stands for resistance and C stands for capacitance. But anyway, resistance is present already in the circuit and there is no external resistance required. But well, a capacitor is is uh, used for coupling how let us see a c amplifier rc coupled c amplifier i am drawing and this is this This is the complete amplifier, which is a RC coupled common emitter amplifier. This is the signal which I said might be coming from a microphone or a oscillator and this is to be coupled to this amplifier, this is basic amplifier. Now, this is the coupling capacitor C, this is uh, let the for the time being let us forget about this, but this is another coupling capacitor which couples the load to the amplifier. Now, for this amplifier or in general for any amplifier the voltage gain versus frequency response, voltage gain versus frequency response, 
for any amplifier, this is a very important uh, characteristic of the amplifier. <coughs> In general, we will get a response of this kind. This is frequency and this is for example, voltage gain. What, what does it say? We are taking that the signal frequency is varied. We start with a very low frequency and then keep on rising, rising and so increase of frequency goes over few orders of magnitude. And we assume here that uh, the signal strength does not change with the frequency. This is uh, true for all good oscillators. If you are changing the frequency, the signal strength will not change. There are different knobs. There is a knob for changing different strength. What, how much uh, is a strong signal you need. Once you fix that, you change the frequency by moving a dial or a knob or in a steps sometimes it changes. Then, but the, the strength of the signal will not change, only the frequency will change. So, we are starting from very low frequency and then we are going to very high frequency. What kind of curve we get is this. That means, below a certain frequency here in this region, there is a, a fall of gain. Similarly, there is a region in which there is a almost frequency independent gain. Gain remains constant when we are changing, this is frequency axis, when we are changing the frequency and then again the gain falls. Now, we will discuss at length the reasons for the fall of these of the gain with frequency. But soon few points which we are almost currently assuming will be uh, clear very soon. Now, here this is the, the gain at mid band A m, m stands for mid band, flat band and then gain falls and when the gain is 70.7 .7, which is actually root root 2 by 2 is equal to 0 0.707 and you will see the significance of these figures. So, when <coughs> the gain falls at the value of 70.7 percent or 0 0.707 of A m, then we draw a line which cuts the frequency at two points, one is this, this is f 1 and this is f 2. And the bandwidth amplifier, bandwidth is f 2 minus f 1. This is the bandwidth. These f 1 and f 2 are the cutoff frequencies. In fact, in, in most of the applications, the amplifier is used in this middle band. So, this is mid band region, mid band region here. This is from here to here this is mid band region and uh, below this, this is the lower cutoff region, this is the upper cutoff region. Now, it can be shown that these frequencies are actually half power points, Frequen f 1 and f 2 are half power.
because it is voltage and uh, power power is proportional to a square of voltage. Now, as I said 0 0.707 is actually root 2 by 2. So, I could have written here instead of 0 0.7 I could have written 0 0.2 by 2 let us say the output voltage here it is a m anyway. Now, powers are, con are, are proportional to the square of the voltages therefore, power at cutoff here this is lower cutoff this is upper cutoff upper cutoff. So, power at cutoff and whether it is lower cutoff or at higher cutoff power is the same. So, power at cutoff divided by power at mid band this is equal to at mid band if it is the voltage is corresponding voltage is V. So, it is V square and here it is root 2 by 2 into V whole square and this is half. Therefore, from here we obviously see that power at cutoff P cutoff power at cutoff from here from this equation this ratio is half. So, power at cutoff is half of power at mid band <coughs> that explains that these points F 1 and F 2 are half power points. So, when the power falls from midpoint to half of its value then that when it cuts the this curve it gives the lower cut off F 1 and upper cut off F 2 frequencies. <coughs> now, power levels in electronics and in, in electrical engineering are most often are described is an another unit which is a log unit called decibel. decibel. It is written with a small d and capital B decibels. How the I as, as I said it is a log scale and when we describe the fall in voltage, fall in power or the gains in terms of decibels then you know we can use logarithmic algebra that we will see and that makes the life very convenient and easy and things can be manipulated very uh, <coughs> simply. This is defined d v is defined as 10 log base 10 and the ratio of 2 powers power P 2 it may be in watts or milliwatts in the same unit we have to take power P 1. So, writing simply the 2 powers P 2 by P 1 is good enough and P 2 by P 1 is a ratio. So, it will be a number and this can taking log of that number and multiply by 10 will give you d v. For example, let p 2 is equal to 2 p 1 meaning that the power output power is double of input power. So, that this ratio p 2 by p 1 we substitute p 2 here. So, simply we will get d v 10 log base 10 2 p 1 by p 1 
and they are cancelled. So, we are left with 10 log 10 and 2 and this comes out to be you look for the 10 base 10 log for 2 and multiply by 10 it is very close to 3 dB. So, instead of saying that output power is double of the input power, we can say that the, the power level rises by 3 dB by 3 dB. And uh, if <coughs> that means there is a 3 dB gain or in the amplifier. If P 2 is 100 times P 1, 100 times, then this is as I said it is log scale. So, this will be in dB saying this that output power is 100 times of input power, we may say that this in dB it will be 10 log base 10 into 100 and this is 20 dB. So, the amplifier has a gain of 20 dB and so when this number in this expression when this ratio comes positive and if P 2 is higher than P 1 then it will be a num it will be positive and number as we are seeing 10 dB, 12 dB, 50 dB or 20 dB we can we can um, talk in terms of dB any powers. Now, if P 2 is less than P 1, if P 2 is less than P 1 what does it mean? There is no gain in fact, there is a power loss. In that case, the it will come in dBs, it will come in negative. So, let P 2 as an example, let P 2 be equal to 1 by 10 of P 1, then in dBs, this will be 10 log base and this is this will be simply P 1, P 1 will cancel out. So, it will be 0.1 and if we look for the log, then this will be minus 1 dB. So, if the power at the output is one tenth of the power at input, then we may say that it is minus 1 dB. Power level said midwind and power levels at cutoff frequencies they can be similarly related. So, the power we can write in dB this is 10 log 10 power at cutoff here. here or here cut off divided by power at mid band in the frequency independent region. And we have said that this is half we just find out that power at cut off is half of power at mid band power here is half of power here in dv this means this is equal to 10 log 10 by half which is 0.5 and this is approximately minus 3 dB. So, power points f 1 and f 2 are also called 3 dB points. 3 dB power is down from mid band frequency mid band power. We can talk so far we were talking in terms of powers, but as we know that power P is proportional to voltage square. So, we can talk in terms of uh, voltages 
what how much is the fall in voltage or power gain uh, the voltage gain voltage fall this all we can discuss in terms of dv's so using this that power is proportional to the square of the voltage we can write in dv in terms of voltages dv is equal to 10 log base 10 v2 by v1 square if we take this square this side this becomes 20 log base 10 v2 by v1 so in terms of power and voltages there is a difference there it is 10 log here it is 20 log in terms of voltages now if v2 is 10 times of v1 in dv's we will say in dv's we will say 20 log base 10 10 and this comes out to be 20 dv so if at any point if the voltage rises 10 times of the previous value then we say that it has uh, gone up by 20 dv and similarly if if v2 is half of v1 or which is 0.5 v1 then db in db this is 20 log 10 into 0 0.5 and this comes out to be minus 6 db if the voltage at any point of the circuit falls half of its previous value then in terms of dv we say that the voltage has fallen by 6 dv minus sign indicates the fall and plus sign indicates the rise or gain and then we apply rules of logarithmic rules are applicable as i said that makes analyze the, the calculations much simpler let us take for example we can use this fact that since v2 by v1 when this is equal to 2 it corresponds to 6 db then if the voltage gain is 4 voltage gain is 4 then 4 is equal to 2 and the product in log schemes scale becomes the addition so this is equal to 6 dv plus 6 dv so it is 12 dv and we can extend it for voltage gain of 40 voltage gain of 40 in dv's we can write 40 is equal to 2 into 2 into 10 and we know this is 6 dv this is 6 dv this is 20 dv so this is 6 plus 6 plus 20 32 dv if we take false then <coughs> let the voltage falls to 1000 that is v2 by v1 is equal to 1 by 1000 now 1 by 1000 is equal to 1 by 10 into 1 by 10 into 1 by 10 and 1 by 10 we have seen earlier this is equal to minus 20 dv plus minus 20 dv plus minus 20 dv so this is minus 60 dv if the voltage at a point has fallen to 1000th of its previous value in terms of dv it is fall and we say 
that voltage at that point has fallen by 60 dV. So, it is much convenient to talk in terms of, uh, of dV and engineers and scientists very widely use this dV scale. You must develop familiarity by calculating various uh, numbers into uh, decibels and so dV is, is very widely used and that is why we have taken here. We took an example of the RC coupled amplifier in the beginning. We continue the analysis that suppose we want to design a amplifier in which the lower cutoff frequency F1 is given that keep it for example 100 hertz or 1 kilohertz like that then how we can design it it is so this is the analysis of the rc coupled amplifier so coupling capacitors let me tell you one fundamental thing about this which i will anyway go do it now in details this is the coupling capacitor this is also the coupling capacitor for the time being let us just consider this coupling capacitor this fall in gain this f1 comes because of this capacitor that in the mid frequency region the the reactance of this capacitor is not much and the voltage the signal because when the signal passes there is a mild drop here and that drop of signal across the capacitor is insignificant in the middle mid band region. But as we decrease the frequency then the reactance will gradually become more and more important there will be larger and larger voltage signal voltage drops and whatever signal drops here is not available that is not going inside at the input of the amplifier that is the waste not recoverable this is not desired. But anyway this is the evil necessity where we want to couple. Now the coupling capacitor is doing two jobs here one is that it is coupling the signal to the amplifier this is one this is what we want and another point it, another part which it is playing that any DC signal a DC voltage from the source side from the previous side of the circuit also is blocked completely. You will recall that through a capacitor DC cannot pass. So, this DC if there are several stages RC coupled stages from DC point of view all stages can be individually analyzed and designed and they will work perfectly all right and RC coupled coupling is used. So, this, uh, this is the coupling capacitor and it is doing two functions we are concerned here with the only one function. The, the other function is it is blocking DC and the primary objective here is coupling that how effectively it couples. So, this is that. <coughs> now, I we take we analyze the effect of this capacitor and uh, uh, what is the expression for the cutoff frequencies which if cutoff frequency is given we can choose the components like capacitor at accordingly and if capacitor suppose is given that this value of capacitor has to be used for coupling then we know what will be the cutoff frequencies. So, coupling capacitors and low frequency response.
for analysis purposes only one capistance is sufficient. Uh, actually as I said there is a capistor at the output also that we will take little later and the circuit is this. This is the C amplifier and uh, this is the coupling capacitor. This is the source resistance which every source has and for the sake of completeness we are considering it. So, this capacitance C is the coupling capacitor. It couples the signal to the amplifier. And here this is the voltage between this point with ground this is V in. This is the actual signal out of V s V in is uh, effectively going to the amplifier. Now, when we say that in this frequency region the gain is falling actually the reactance of this capacitance is significant uh, at those frequencies and as we lower the frequencies reactance which is 1 by j omega c. So, lower the frequency higher the value of reactance of the capacitance it increases accordingly they are the drop increases and so that explains why the gain falls very important statement for this lower in the lower cutoff frequency region the coupling capacitor is responsible how lower will be the uh, f1 the lower cutoff frequency that will depend on the value of coupling capacitor c now this we can for, for analysis purposes we can uh, heavenize this circuit and a prototype circuit can be drawn prototype. Prototype circuit where we will replace this by a thevenized resistance. So, that is we measure here the resistance R in thevenized resistance and uh, so the prototype circuit becomes this this is the capacitor rs the source resistance and R in is thevenized input resistance of the amplifier, thevenized input resistance or impedance at low frequencies impedance and resistances are same. So, they are used loosely uh, there, there is no distinction. So, thevenized input resistance. Now, this is the prototype circuit for the analysis and how much is the current I in the circuit? We can simply write the applied voltage V s and these three components the source resistance, the coupling capacitor and the thevenized input resistance of the amplifier are in they are in series. So, we can write for the current 
how much will be the current in the circuit. The current in the circuit is I equal to V s divided by the total resistance, because they are in series R s plus R in minus J x c. X c is the reactance, X c is reactance of the capster which is equal to 1 by omega c and uh, this is when it is j then this j can be put up taking both you know you have done it long many times that put another j here and one j here multiply by j divide by j that will become minus sign and one j will be left. So, it will be this and the input voltage the input voltage to the amplifier amplifier what input voltage this one V in this is the input voltage and now we are seeing this is a function of signal frequency omega here omega is coming. So, the input voltage of the amplifier V in is V in equals to R in whatever is voltage appearing here this is V in with here between this and ground between this and ground this is V in. <coughs> so, the current is flowing and that current is equal to this what is the voltage developed here that will be this resi the resistance and uh, R in by R s plus R in minus J x c into V s. V s will be equal to V in if R s is negligibly small and reactance is also 0. I repeat look here at this expression here V in is equal to V s or almost equal to V s if R s negligibly small tending to 0 and uh, reactance is also tending to 0 then this is true and the whole signal is uh, is falling on the is going to the amplifier. Let us continue the analysis this happens actually at the mid band, but we will say it differently. The magnitude of V in magnitude of V in as a function of signal frequency signal frequency omega is this the magnitude of V in we take the real part of that and that is R in R s plus R in square plus x c square into V s. This is the magnitude of the signal which is going from uh, which is going into the amplifier this is the magnitude and the phase angle and the phase angle th 
theta between v in and v s and the same phase angle will appear between output voltages and input voltage and this is theta which is given by theta is tan inverse x c r s plus r in. In this unit let us rename renumber the equations let this be equation 1 this is equation 2. Now, we discuss the mid band and the lower cutoff region and come out with, with an ex useful expression which can be used to calculate the value of capacitor uh, for a particular cutoff value. These two equations now case 1 at mid, mid band we are considering at mid band. In mid band the reactance of the capacitor is negligible in comparison to this, this reactance is negligible in comparison to this that is R x c is very very small as compared to R s plus R in. This is how the mid band is defined actually at mid band this reactance of the capacitor is much less with this reaction uh, with this resistance R s plus R in. And the in this situation the voltage drop across the capacitor is taken as 0. The, the voltage drop voltage drop across the capacitor C may be dropped then from this equation here this is dropped then what we get V in simply equal to R in by R s plus R in and magnitude V s. This is free, there is nothing here these components are not frequency dependent and hence the gain at the mid band this is for mid band. the gain at the mid band is frequency independent here this is almost frequency independent. And here by the because the reactance is uh, negligible if we neglect if this we take tending to 0 if x c tends to 0 then theta will be tending to 0. So, there is no phase angle between signal V s and V in. So, this that is why we get at the mid band frequency independent behavior of the amplifier. Let us consider another case, case 2 this is another extreme case. The one extreme case is this upper one and the other extreme case is let omega be equal to 0. That means, we are talking of DC signals. The frequency of the input signal drops almost to 0. In this situation when omega tends to omega tends to 0 the angular frequency of the signal then reactance tends to be infinity 
and in this case this will completely block DC. So, V in the signal which is going in the amplifier will be 0 and the output signal will also be 0 and theta the phase angle in this situation if we substitute here theta uh, this uh, x c as infinity then theta comes out to be 90 degrees. So, these are the two cases extreme cases one when theta is 90 and the other situation where theta was 0 and that 0 happens in the mid band and this happens for DC just the extreme left point of the curve. From here let us examine this case this is the third case is most significant case 3. Let us examine the situation what happens when the reactance becomes equal to the series resistance of the amplifier of the circuit the prototype circuit the RC network which we draw this is the prototype RC network. So, if x c is equal to the two resistances then under this condition from equation 2 this is equation 2 if the two are equal then you know this will be 10 inverse 1 and theta will be 45 degrees. So, theta from equation 2 from equation 2 theta equal to 10 inverse 1 or theta is 45. Substituting this we get if we substitute substi substituting x c is equal to r s plus r in in equation 1. Here in this equation if we substitute this we get V in is equal to root 2 into R in R s plus R in into V s and this is mid frequency this happens at mid frequency. So, V in is equal to root 2 of uh, V in at mid frequency. At mid band 0 0.7 <coughs> of V in at mid band or simply fall of 3 dB. So, that this defines the cutoff this condition this condition is used x c r s plus r in or it defines the cutoff frequency. Let us call let the lower cutoff frequency be f 1. Then let us substitute for this reactance 1 by omega c and omega is 2 pi f 1 into c the value of that coupling capacitor this is equal to R s plus R n. From here the frequency f 1 is 1 by 2 pi R s plus R n into 
C. At mid bend, the angle theta was 0 degrees. At the other extreme, theta was 90 degrees. So, when we lower the frequency from mid band, the point at which theta is 45 degrees that is achieved when the reactance of the capacitance is equal to the other series resistances in the, in the circuit, then we get this. This is the lower cutoff frequency. If we know the value of R in, which is the thevenized input resistance of the, of the amplifier and this is the source resistance, then we can find out the cutoff frequency. We can write in journal actually this equal to 1 by 2 pi r effective, which may be r effective, may be for example, r s plus r in or if r s is 0, then it will be simply 0 or very low in comparison to this, then it will be simply r in into c. This is the expression for the lower cutoff frequency and this expression we can use if we know the value of this capacitance, then we can find out the cutoff frequency below which the circuit is not normally used. And uh, if we know F 1, if we are given F 1 that calculate the value of capacitance if this effective value of resistance associated with that circuit is known, then uh, we can find out the value of capacitor. So, this is the analysis of uh, the, the effect influence of the capacitor on the low frequency performance of the amplifier. As I said, RC coupled amplifiers are very widely used. This analysis is very important and we have completed the analysis. We know if we know this value, we can find out the cutoff frequency. Now, as we increase the frequency, the influence this becomes almost the capacitor becomes a almost a short and there is no effect of it. Then why the gain falls? We will see later that the reason for this is junction capacitances associated with the, with the circuit. So, remember low frequency cutoff comes from coupling capacitors, high frequency cutoff comes from junction capacitances. So, at this point I stop for the time being and we will continue.